That was a pretty progressive ending, especially for 1959. Nobody watching then expected Joe to end up with Christine, that's for sure. To me, the essence of Sam Fuller's storytelling is that he hits on a provocative notion, but then lets his characters be whoever they are. He writes for dramatic impact, not with an agenda. When he brought the script of The Crimson Kimono to Columbia boss Sam Briskin, who'd taken over as head of the studio after the death of Harry Cohn, Briskin didn't shy away from the interracial love story. But he did tell Fuller to make Charlie Bancroft a miserable son of a bitch, so the public would understand why Christine chooses Joe in the end. And Fuller refused, explaining that Christine loved Joe and that Charlie was a good, upstanding man. And if anybody was guilty of racism, it was Joe, who couldn't see past the fears that fueled his own prejudice. Well, Briskin allowed Fuller to tell the tale his way, but the director was not at all happy with the way Columbia marketed the film, playing up the racial angle with an exploitive and sensational ad campaign. Fuller's control over his films extended only so far. As I mentioned at the top, one of Sam Fuller's most distinctive traits as a writer was his ability to create unique female characters. The two prominent women in this story, Christine and Mac, have their own lives, completely independent of the men in the story. Fuller's women are never accessories to the male characters. He always gave them a strong sense of self. But there was definitely a Fuller type, much like Howard Hawks looked for actresses who exemplified his feminine ideal. Victoria Shaw, with her angular beauty and flinty resolve, certainly fit his bill, as did actresses like Jean Peters, Dolores Dorn, and Constance Towers, all of whom had their best roles in Fuller films. Foremost among them was German actress Christa Lang, who co-starred with Glenn Corbett in Fuller's 1974 film Dead Pigeon on Beethoven Street. She was married to the director for 30 years, and with their daughter Samantha, is to this day the loyal caretaker of Sam Fuller's legacy. Fuller also had a special place in his stories for wise dames of a certain age. The character of Mac is a Fuller specialty, a salty, hard-boiled older woman comfortable being on her own. Thelma Ritter in Pick Up on South Street, Beatrice Kay in Underworld USA, Virginia Gray in The Naked Kiss, and Barbara Stanwyck in The Fantastic Forty Guns are all part of Fuller's senior sorority. Anna Lee, who played Mac, isn't that well known today, but she was a big star in her youth, earning the nickname the British Bombshell. She was born in the UK as Joan Boniface Winifrith, her family being descendants of the Catholic missionary Saint Boniface, who was martyred in 754 AD. She started making films in England in the 1930s and married director Robert Stevenson in 1934. After coming to America, Lee became a regular in John Ford's stock company, appearing in How Green Was My Valley, Fort Apache, The Horse Soldiers, and Two Road Together, as well as several others. TCM fans may know her best as Sister Margareta in The Sound of Music or as Mrs. Bates in Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. But soap opera devotees know her from a long-running role as Lila Quartermain on General Hospital, which she continued even after a car accident in 1981 left her paralyzed from the waist down. Her daughter, Venetia Stevenson, was a popular actress in the 1950s and later a film producer. And a final note, Sugar Torch was played by former burlesque dancer Gloria Paul. Although for Sugar's death scene, a stunt double took the running header into traffic. In true commando fashion, Sam Fuller didn't bother with permits or police protection. He shot the scene right on the streets in downtown L.A. without telling anybody what was going to happen. When studio boss Sam Briskin saw the footage, he was outraged by the fact that no one on the street stopped to help. Nobody even looked at that poor girl, he said. What's this country coming to? That'll do it for this week. You know the drill. Give us your feedback on the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed. And if you dug the Crimson Kimono, you don't have long to wait for another film from Sam Fuller. Next month, I'll be showing his 1961 gangster saga, Underworld USA, starring Cliff Robertson as an ex-con out to avenge his father's murder. Next week, however, we're headed to Argentina, well, a studio facsimile of Argentina, for the 1945 RKO film Cornered 
starring Dick Powell as a World War II vet hunting the Nazis who murdered his bride. Until then, sayonara.